In this video, we're going to learn how to do vector search in ClickHouse without using any indexing techniques. So it's all about the linear scan. So in order to do vector search, we need to have some vectors, which are arrays of floating point numbers that represent something. We're gonna be using this hugging face dataset, which contains embeddings for 1 million Wikipedia articles. And the embeddings have been created from a combination of the title and the text, and so it aims to capture the meaning of that text and put it in N, which in this case is 1536 dimensional space. In this video, we're gonna take one of those wiki entries and see if we can find other similar ones by doing a vector search against the embedding column of all the others. So let's launch ClickHouse Local, and then we're gonna describe the structure of all of the Parquet files that I've downloaded into the data directory. And so you can see it comes back the same structure as we saw on the hugging face UI. So we've got the ID, we've got the title, the text, and then the embedding itself. Let's delete the describe setting and the clause, and then we'll have a look at the data itself. So we'll select each of the ID, title, and text columns. Then we're gonna get the length of the embedding column, and then we'll get uh, 10 items from that column, and we'll just get the first row. As you can see, it comes back. This is the entry for Julian Clerk. It tells you something about Julian Clerk. We've then got that 1536 embedding size, and then we can see the first 10 elements as well. Let's now create a table. So we're gonna delete the limit, the format, the slice. We'll create our table function. The engine's gonna be merge tree. We'll order it by the underscore ID column. And then let's leave that running for a little bit. It's gonna take a while, so we're gonna speed this up for the sake of the video. And you can see it eventually comes back. It's taken 43 seconds to ingest 1 million rows. So now we're gonna try and search against this table. So to do that, we need to be able to look up an embedding for a particular ID. And so we're gonna create ourselves a find embedding function. It takes in an ID, and then it does a query against the wiki embeddings table where the ID matches the one that we've passed in. And we're just gonna get one row. Now this is it, so this is a UDF, and UDFs need to return a scalar value. So we need to make sure we have that limit one, otherwise it will throw an exception. Now that we've done that, we can write a query against the wiki embeddings table. We're gonna select the title, and then we're gonna use the cosine distance function to find the distance between the embedding in each of the rows with the embedding for uh, the United States Soccer League system. And then we're gonna order by the score and get 10 results. And you can see it comes back. So in first place, as you would expect, the, you know, is the actual article itself. And then the other ones are in some way similar. They're about kind of football systems in different countries, something about football in the United States and so on. Let's now try to do something a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna change the limit to 100 and we're gonna wrap that old query in a CTE called top articles. Well, in, then instead of returning the text, we're gonna return the tokens. We're gonna to split it up using the tokens function, which splits a string into tokens using non-alphanumeric ASCII characters as the separator. And then after that, we're gonna create shingles from those tokens that we've created. Now the array shingles function generates subarrays, consecutive subarrays with the specified length based on that input array. And so we're gonna use the array join function to explode out the shingles that we get. And we're gonna check if the length of the text tokens is less than three, we'll just wrap that inside uh, a literal array. Otherwise, we're gonna apply our shingles function. Once we've done that, we'll have some shingles. We'll count how, how many times each one comes up, and then we're gonna return it ordered by the count descending. And so you can see we come back, we've got the United States in first place in the United, United States and, and so the, the most blatant thing to me here was that we're seeing like what I would call co really common words a lot of times. So what I was curious is can we actually get rid of those by filtering them out? So filter out the stop words. So I created a CSV file of stop words. So we'll have a quick look at that. So you can see these are, these are 150 or 160 common words. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a function called number of stop words. And what it will do is just count the number of stop words that exist in a particular shingle by comparing the, sh the values in the shingle with the values in the stop words file, and it will return us a number. And then we're gonna create another function, and this one is gonna say whether or not a shingle starts or ends with a stop word. So again, we're gonna go pass in the shingle, it's gonna then go over our stop words file, checking whether the first entry's in there and then checking whether the last entry's in there. And so this one will return a Boolean value. We're then gonna get our previous query and we're gonna add in a where clause when we're gonna say where the number of stop words for that shingle is less than or equal to one, then we wanna return it. 
and it should not start or end with a stop word. And so now let's run the query and we get back a bit of a more interesting result. So this time it's Major League Soccer, Football League System, the United States, promotion and relegation is now right at the top. And you can see we, now that the, the stop words are, are gone, it's actually giving us some more interesting results. So if you want to learn more about vector search, including a bunch of use cases other than text embeddings, check out this video here by my colleague Dale and I'll see you in the next one.